What's cracking guys? Welcome back to the channel. As always, I'm Dan at Trim True Apparent Tea Shop. Today we've got another multi-job bonanza video for you, backed by very popular demand. Everyone seemed to enjoy it last time. So I'm taking a lot of the small jobs that I get in the shop through the week and mashing them all together in a video. Uh, so the video's not made yet. I'm seeing what comes in. So I apologize in advance if it seems a bit mashed up, but I hope you enjoy it. So uh, keep watching to see what we got. Hello guys, so what is this job? Any guesses? Ralph Lauren suede loafers and they've got silver eyelets. What the customer wants to do is change them to black eyelets. So a bit of a challenging job actually. What we've got to do is unpick all of the lining so we can get to the old rivets, take them out. We're gonna take these tassels off, get them back on. So it's gonna be delicate, but uh, let's get to it. All right, ladies and gents, so just for a change, I'm actually at my desk because I just want to sit down, take my time and have a steady hand for this. Taking the shoe tree out. Now, what I'm going to start with is just undoing the lining. All right, so I'm just taking our knife and ever so delicately, actually, that's a bit long. There we are. Okay, just delicately going underneath the lining, cutting through this thread. Now all this thread's going to come out, the old thread. And when we replace it, when we stitch it all back together, we're gonna to have to replace it like for like. So go through the same holes with navy thread. And then there's, I'll show you, beige thread on the inside. So it's a bit of a technical job, this one. Um, but the customer really wanted it doing. So we could have those black eyelets just to make the shoes look the part for how he wants them to look. All right, and then we should be able to peel back this flap, and just release the factory glue. And now there's just a separate piece of lining here that we need to cut, making up the tongue. There we are. We have created access to the back. Okay, there we go. So the lining's up, uh, but of course to get these eyelets out, we need to get the lace out. So we just got to take these tassels off and then I'll show you how we remove the lace. Okay, so as the lace comes out, if you haven't seen deck shoes before, these laces are threaded all the way around the shoe. So as you tighten it, it pulls from a sort of 360 circumference. Now it's threaded like this, it goes underneath the eyelets and then over the top of the eyelets, underneath, over the top. So normally you would need a special tool to re-thread these laces. Uh, but in this instance, of course, we're just taking them out. And I didn't realize they're actually kind of glued in a little bit, so they're a bit tough to come out. Okay, there's all our dead eyelets. All right, but for now we're gonna leave this and crack on with a different job. All right, so next on the agenda, we got these garden shears that we're just gonna sharpen up. So this is one of the many kinds of small jobs that I do in the shop that doesn't normally make it on the channel, but today we're making an exception. There we go, sharpie sharpie, super quick job, literally five minutes, five pounds. So now the customer can go back to trimming her bush. Oh, it's extra cold in the shop this morning. But next little thing I wanna show you is this collar. Now, you know, I always say I get lots of small stuff in the shop that I don't show you. So this is one of them. We've got a collar here and we just need to fix onto it these little diamante letters to spell out something. I'll let you try and guess what we're gonna spell as we're doing it. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. So, uh, so this is actually a dog's collar and this is gonna be the dog's name on it. it. Used to be on in the old collar, transferring it onto this one. So it needs a little slip of leather 
it's going to act as a band for the letters to um, just sort of sit loosely on and run along. So, customer doesn't mind what size it is, so I'm just going to measure, I reckon, let's do four and a half inches. And then our strip of leather should, well, it needs to be small enough to go through the letters. So that would just be 12 mil. So let's make our piece. Okay, so what I'm cutting our strip out of is just a spare leather insole lining, which is gonna do the job just great. And then I can use this for all sorts of other bits and bobs down the line. Okay, cool. So now let's just see if our band will fit through our letter nicely. Lovely. All right, let's put it together. Ta-da! Foxy, with a little paw print on the end. <laughs> right, so let's get it on the collar. So first we're just getting a dab of glue on the back of our new leather band and then a dab on the collar that's just going to hold it in place and then we're going to secure it either with stitches or silver rivets. I haven't quite decided yet but we'll let the glue go off whilst we're thinking about it. Okay so we're going for stitching guys so we're just going to run a couple of lines of stitching across each end. And yes, I'm wearing my coat. It's just be one of those videos, one of those videos from just throwing stuff together. I'll give you guys a bit of variety. So there we go. And the finished thing says Foxy. And you know, I think I feel quite Foxy today. <laughs> Next job. Out. Okay, ladies and gents, so what you just saw, what I'm in the middle of, we've got these biker ankle boots. Just need a few bits doing, so the outsole was worn, so we've replaced it with a nice Vibram unit. But we've also upgraded to a leather midsole, so these are going to be solid once they're done. And a few other bits need doing, where's the other one? Can't see it, but the other boot has got a broken buckle, so we're replacing the buckle there, tightening up this uh, strap that goes around the front and giving them a good condition with some black pigment. And uh, so a couple of people asked, what does my shirt say? Train shoe repairs, Dan. I mean, it wouldn't say anyone else's name, would it? All right, ladies and gents, so here's our buckle attachment I'm talking about. So the new buckle's already on the strap. I've picked it apart, glued it back together. This is where it goes, so we just need to glue it back in. So I'll show you what I do with awkward little uh, holes like this. Got some glue on our strap. And then what I'm going to do, let's just get a bit messy. Just get some of the glue on my finger. And then we can just poke it inside there. And then if we flip it over, you remember I said this long strap here has got loose over time. So we're just gonna cut it out so that we can shorten it. And, uh, and then once it's stitched back in, it'll be nice and tight. And there we go, it should pop out. There it is. So let's just cut a bit off. About an inch should do it. So cutty cutty. Better to cut off too little than too much. So if it's too little, we can go back to it and cut some more if it's too much. Well, it's game over, isn't it, folks? All right, guys, so to just finish our job up on these, we're gonna give the uppers some TLC. So they're very dry, not cracked anywhere, just dry, but the colors faded a lot. So what we're gonna do is the sole anyway. I love it when we have the Vibram soles, when we have the yellow logo. It just looks cool, doesn't it? We're using Puro. This is my favorite cream for this sort of job because it's a conditioner. It's got nutrients and oils in it, as well as pigment for the color. So we're just taking a silver cloth, 
getting some of our puree cream and then applying it all over the place. Now what I'm gonna do is get it on there and then let it soak in and let the dye that's in there develop for 10 minutes and then shine it off. And this stuff actually shines up really nicely as well. So win, win, win all round. Make sure we get all these little bits on the straps where they've been rubbing. Okay, rock and roll. So that's been 10 minutes, so we can buff it off now. So I'm just using a horse hair brush for this. I mean, you can see this is the one I always use for my black shoes. When it comes to buffing a leather, you just kind of pick between a cloth, selvet cloth, or a brush, depending on the leather, and it's something you pick up with experience. Um, this leather is very soft, but it's got a lot of grain to it. So that's why I've opted for a brush to just, you know, skim over it like this. I feel like we'll get a better finish and using a cloth to do small circles. All right, this is job done on our bike ankle boots. So we've got a new Vibram outsole, beefed them up with a leather midsole and sorted out that broken buckle. So let's move on. Right, so back to our sexy loafers. Okay, now time to get our new eyelets in. So these are the new eyelets, black, all right? And I can just show you, see how they've got a tube on one end. So that's what flattens down once we squash them in. So let's get to it. Okay, so black eyelets in, like evil black eyelets. So we could call it a day and say, job done. Of course not, we've got to sort the lining back up, stick it all down. So let's head over to our original work area. Okay, so now we're over here, what we're gonna do is just apply a bit of glue on this inside edge, just to uh, prepare it for sticking in place when we stitch it. But before we glue it, we wanna get the lace in. So I'm just gonna pop that in. Just doing it in that same under over fashion as they came out. There's actually little uh, wear, wear and tear marks so you can see exactly where they used to go. So once the lace is in, what we do is just go around and make sure that the lace is sitting flat everywhere and it's not twisted anywhere so it'll create lumps underneath. But it is, so let's get some glue on. When we're gluing this, gluing suede, we've got to be real careful we don't get glue anywhere we don't want it on the suede because it's a real pig to get off. Yeah, if you can get it off at all once it's on the suede. All right, so just while we leave that drying, let's have a look at another job. All right, guys, so next job, we've got another pair of hobnail shoes, parade shoes this time. And I just wanted to shoot this one because some of you are a little disappointed that I didn't show you a full resole this time but that's what we're doing because uh they've just got a single sole on which is not correct and they need to be double soled and the hobnail pattern is wrong and the leather is uh, these are samuel windsor shoes and to be honest the leather's not that great it's certainly not very waterproof once we've got hobnails in so we're doing a full new leather sole and then making them a double sole as they should be correcting the hobnail pattern and doing the toes and heels so let's crack on okay guys let's get to business so first order of business getting these old hobnails out this video is going to be a little bit quicker than usual because this is a big extensive job so to film it all would be really long i'm not sure if i've mentioned to you guys before try and keep my videos between oops 20 and 30 minutes because it seems to be the sweet spot you know any less than 20 minutes and uh have to rush the video, not film everything that I want to film in detail for you guys. And any longer, you know, longer than 30 minutes, I appreciate that's quite a long video to watch and we all have lives. 
Okay, so next we're working at taking our iron horseshoe off and the paper bag down, just to take the shoe from any food I might have left on the counter. Oil, protein powder. I'm just in the middle of taking this heel block off. I'm gonna show you. See that scratch mark there? That's where somebody's caught it on the machine when they've been finishing the inside edge of this heel block. It's terrible. So that's why we finish the heel block before we put it on the sole. So there's no chance of uh, butchering it like that. So now we are, of course, whipping off this inferior sole. Um, now, one of the main reasons Custer wanted these resoling is because his feet were getting wet. They were leaking. They weren't very waterproof, and that's mainly down to the quality of the leather. So we're putting on some nice wears leather once we're done with this. So as we take our sole off, <laughs> look how easily that came off. Uh, you're going to see right down to the mesh cavity inside our Goodyear welt. What's come out is a board of cork. So where we use cork filler paste, sometimes you buy in a sheeting board. So uh, what we're gonna be able to do with this is take it off and just put it back in, plug up any gaps with uh, filler. Actually, I've changed my mind. This is a bit rubbish. I'm just gonna replace all the cork with fresh filler. All right, so we got our Flexo Fill. Someone said that would be a good bodybuilder name, Flexo Fill. <laughs> Now, you know, a lot of people use board. Uh, a lot of really good cobblers use board, to be honest, but I prefer this on most occasions, mainly for convenience. It's, it's quicker, easier, does the same job. And um, I've got things to do in the shop. You know, I've got keys to cut, watches to fix. So if I can cut down any time on the shoe repairs without sacrificing quality, I'll do it. Oh, he's still filming. Okay guys, so for our sole, our first layer is going to be a long sole and it's this brand called Wears. This is what I normally use as my house leather. It's good stuff, really hardy. So let's get it on. Okay, so we've got to get glue on our sole. Time to get sticky and then we can fix it all together. Right, gang so soles all on now we've got to talk about the double sole right so your parade boots ammo boots have an extra layer a double sole to give it double thickness before we put all the iron work on so this is wears lever again and uh, i'll show you how we get that on guys there's our double sole on all right there you go double thickness and groove ready for stitching now double sole we'll still stitch it we can stitch it uh we just have to be careful on the machine let the machine take its time and do its thing but it will go through a double layer
okay guys, just gonna leave the sole alone for a minute and talk to you about the heels. So, of course we've got our heel block that came off, our horseshoe plate and rubber insert, well it will be an insert to go on, but to compensate the height that we've added on the sole, we need to add a little bit of height with some rubber onto the heel. So I'm just gonna put that all together and then we can carry on. guys making great progress so our heels all done we've got our insert the raise the heel blocks all nailed on from the inside uh, but now we've got our giddy up horseshoe we've got to nail it on with the proper pegs <laughs> Okay, hobnails. Right, so to give you some variety, last time I did this job, I didn't wet the sole because uh, I didn't want to ruin the nice chestnut stain we put on it. But this time I'm going to wet the sole to show you. And this is going to soften up the leather and let the hobnails just go in a little easier. And next thing I want to talk to you guys about is at the beginning I said the pattern for the hobnails was wrong. It was I'm not sure what it was, but how it has to be is two, three, four, four. In that order, so that's what we're gonna do. And then we just go around, send them all home. Right, and this muck, I don't know if you see this muck, that's not dye or polish, that's uh, bits rubbing off of the iron. So what we're gonna do is just stain the sole black now to finish off the job. Okay, so there we go then. Hey, what are you doing over there? Get over here. There you are, you little rascals. So there we go, we're done with our parade shoes, right? So they've had full leather sole, double leather sole at the front, toenails, horseshoe heels, hobnails in the correct pattern. Job done. Okay, ladies and gents, back to our loafers. Uh, now I've just glued this flap down because I'm running out of time to get this job finished, but we need to stitch it all in place. So let's head over to the patcher. Okay, so what we're doing whilst we're patching is we've made sure we've got navy thread in the top, beige thread in the bottom to match the original shoe and we've, we've uh, uh, adjusted the stitch length so that our new stitches are going through the same holes as the original. Okay, so there we go, we're done with our Ralph Lauren eyelet conversion. All right, I think they look pretty cool. I was a little bit apprehensive about doing this job to bonus, but I'm very happy with how they came out. Anyway, with that, that marks the end of the video. So I hope you enjoyed another multi-job bonanza. Let me know if you did, you like this style of video. Uh, but thanks for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, hit like. It helps other people see this stuff. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm doing new videos every week, so make sure to subscribe. Um, I'll finish by saying if you have a mail order job that you want us to look at, contact us on the Tringshire Bear Facebook page. That's the only place I can reliably get back to everybody. So uh, make sure to hit me there. And thanks for watching. Catch you next week.